Unbelievable discovery. In the heart of Egypt, a team of archaeologists has uncovered a shocking find. A 2,000-year-old ancient airplane. Join us as we delve into the mystery of this incredible artifact and uncover the truth behind its origins. From the first glimpse of the ancient ruins to the scientific analysis of the artifact, this is a discovery that will leave you speechless. The famous Egyptologists of old discovered Purdy tomb imens in Saqqara, Egypt, in 1898. The tomb find was rich with antiquities, painted walls, mummies, and all of the things and worldly stuff left behind to help the departed in the afterlife. Among the normal tools, handicrafts, ceramics, and other items, the researchers discovered a little wooden carved bird. It lay quietly on a type of table set there by unknown hands 2,000, 200 years ago, about 200 BC. The little wooden bird weighed slightly more than 39 grams and was almost completely symmetrical. It was also discovered that the bird model had been painstakingly carved from the wood of a sycamore tree. A wing that was cut separately and placed into a slot on the top of the fuselage was precisely 180 millimeters in span. The wings were astonishingly well-crafted, with a contemporary airfoil design with reversing dihedral, also known as anhedral, meaning that the wings drooped toward the tips, rather than rising slightly as is common in modern airplanes. The fuselage tapered flawlessly, its design so aerodynamic that it resembled a current Cirrus SR-20 aircraft from above. Given that the Wright brothers' maiden flight was still five years away, the miniature bird was simply labeled as a depiction of a genuine bird, but left undecorated in the perspective of the 1898 archaeologist. Unlike any other known bird, the tail was twisted 90 degrees to the vertical, as if it were a rudder. As a consequence, whether you attempt to fly it or imagine it as a bird, the design lacks the pitch stability that a horizontal stabilizer provides, making real flying impossible. Unless, in 1969, Dr. Carlo Messia, a professor of anatomy for artists at Egypt's Helwan University, stumbled upon the model in a display case of bird sculptures at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. As a member of both the Royal Aeromodellers Club and the Egyptian Aeronautical Club, he recognized it as distinct from the other bird models on show. It had the distinct appearance of a miniature aircraft to him. Professor Messiha also remarked that the little wooden bird was distinct from the other carved birds on exhibit. These were more realistic, if stylized, depictions of genuine birds. The Sakara bird, as he christened it soon, was unlike the others. It lacked feet and any painted or sculpted feathers. It had no adornment other than a little eye painted on the right side. Applying a modernist mentality to archaeological concerns, he deduced that the ornaments were removed from the bird because they would have been worthless aerodynamically, adding needless weight. He studied the tail carefully, noticing the lack of the critical horizontal stabilizer. Undaunted, he hypothesized that despite the lack of physical evidence, the flat bottom of the vertical fin had originally been the connection point of a horizontal stabilizer. He declared that the crucial component of the tail had to have been lost at some stage. Armed with his shamelessly contemporary views, he brought the Saqqara bird to the Egyptian Ministry of Culture and requested an examination. Naturally, the Egyptian Ministry of Culture's examination turned out nothing else. If Professor Messiho wanted to make his thesis, the situation demanded additional thought and innovation. As a result, he went on his own series of testing. Professor Messiao opted to construct one himself after being dissatisfied with the trust that a similar vehicle, with the extra tail and proper balance, would be airworthy. Naturally, he discovered that with the appropriate improvements brought to the task by his contemporary understanding, the model he made flew wonderfully well, though only for a few meters when tossed by hand. Others eventually created comparable balsa models and discovered that they too, flew pretty well as long as the center of gravity dropped approximately one-third of the way back along the cord of the wing. The original model's balance was never properly assessed, 
but it is probable that even with the bigger fuselage nearer the nose, the CG would have slipped somewhere beneath the trailing edge of the wing, rendering flying impossible. When the alleged missing tail was included, the balance point would have moved even farther. In other words, weights are required to shift the balance point far enough forward to accomplish flight in models constructed following the same pattern. Despite this, Professor Messiha was certain that his modern-made model, with its new tail, could fly. Professor Messiha then made the outrageous allegation that the original Sakura bird was, in fact, a flying model aircraft. Professor Messier supported his thesis by pointing out that many Egyptian tombs had tiny replicas of items that the recently deceased and mummified could want in the hereafter. When graves were unearthed, models of chariots, ships, people, houses, temples, and other artifacts were regularly discovered. It didn't take long for him to connect the dots and declare that the Sakura bird was, in reality, a replica of the actual thing and so, it may be an Egyptian airplane in miniature. Professor Messiah's suggestion, as outlandish as it may seem, was rapidly taken up by the mainstream media. Soon after, books and articles were created saying that the pharaohs had preceded the Wright brothers into the air, that the Egyptians had once flown above the pyramids and gazed down on the Nile and so on. Professor Messiah himself fueled the flames by claiming that with enough excavating surrounding Saqqara, the ruins of the big glider itself may still be uncovered in all size and magnificence. Others have adopted a more defensible viewpoint, albeit it is still primarily based on modernism and conjecture. The most generally held belief is that the Sakura bird was formerly a toy for children. However, this would imply that a youngster, having watched the flight of birds, would presumably toss it in the expectation that it too would fly thereby making it a model aircraft glider after all. Others thought the Sakura bird was a weather vane, noting that it may have been helpful in determining the direction of the wind. This allegation has even less chance of being true. The Sakura bird has no openings on the snout for string attachment and seems to be too small to capture enough wind to raise itself from its position hanging vertically from a pole. If the wind was actually blowing, a weather vane would appear superfluous. Where did the concept of weather vanes originate from in ancient Egypt? Did they have any? Did they require them? The Sakura bird is now on display at room 22 of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. The sycamore wood has aged and become frail, stained to a dingy tan brown that bears witness to its antiquity. It is now installed on a pillar after over 2,200 years. A little hole in the bottom has been bored so that it may be raised up for better viewing. The archivists have scribbled a number under the wing to mark its location in the collection. Otherwise, it is uninjured, with the exception of a lost tail, if you believe that. The Sakura bird looks to be in flight today. Flight is unquestionably its natural state. It's supposed to be a bird. However, it is unknown if the Sakura bird was meant as a child's play an extremely tiny and heavy weather vane, a model of a bigger design, or what? As we come to the end of this incredible journey of discovery, we can't help but wonder about the advanced technology and engineering that must have been possessed by the ancient civilization that created this 2,000-year-old airplane. While the truth behind this discovery may never be fully understood, it serves as a reminder of the incredible advancements and knowledge that our ancestors had achieved. We hope that this video has sparked your curiosity and imagination, and we look forward to uncovering more mysteries from the past in the future. Thank you for watching.